Welcome to Showing Up Solo, your go-to source for solopreneur success in the digital world. You're not just running a business, you're wearing all the hats, from CEO to content creator. What if I told you there's a way to master online marketing without sacrificing all your time? Hello, and welcome to a special panel style episode of Showing Up Solo. I've got some familiar faces and some new faces. Today, I am joined by Verity Songong, uh, who is a podcasting and course creation coach and also the host of the Lazy Girl's Guide to Podcasting. I've got Anthony Franzis. Did I say that right? Yeah, nailed it. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm always, I was always self-conscious with my dyslexia there. Um, um, Anthony is the tr- strategic partnership executive at Stork Club Fertility and host of the Successful Working Parents podcast. And then we've got Lucy Howell, podcast manager and host of the Balancing Business and Babies podcast. So we've got some very appropriate guests today, considering today's topic, which is struggles and success, navigating parenthood and entrepreneurship. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. I'm super thrilled to have you all on here. Um, I'm going to let you go around and let everyone know a little bit more about you, as well as how long you've been in entrepreneur and how long you've been a parent. Uh, Verity, since you're a returning guest, I'm going to pick on you first. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for having me back as well. It's always nice to be invited back to things. But yeah, so I'm Verity. I host the Lazy Girls Guide to Podcasting. I am obsessed with all things podcasting. And I I just like to help get people into podcasting. And if I can say the word podcast one more time in the sentence, then that'd be great as well, wouldn't it? Because it just speak the word repeatedly. Where everything like take a <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, no, don't. I can imagine people doing that with my podcast episodes and just being like dead on the floor within the first three minutes. Like, podcast, podcast, podcast. <laughs> but yeah, so I talk everything podcasting. My main focus is getting people into podcasting, getting them to their first thousand downloads and then beyond if they want to. But that's my, you know, that's my journey right at the beginning. As you said, I also do course creation work as well with individuals. And then as if that wasn't enough, I also teach part-time health and social care at our local college. And I've been a parent for nine years, wow. nearly 10, which I can't quite believe where that last decade's gone. But yeah, so that's me. Gosh, gosh. It happens so fast. I I know what you mean. Because like when my eldest turned seven, I was like, oh my gosh, you're not a little kid anymore. You're like mm-hmm. big kid now. Like you're- yep you're a big kid now where did how did I get a seven-year-old already yeah Um, (laughs) yeah. we're going into the tween phase at the moment oh wow that's gonna be fun um Anthony you're you're just at the beginning of your parenting journey aren't you oh yeah six six and a half months we're still doing half months at this point so (laughs) we're six and a half months in uh but yeah I my name is Anthony I live in New York City I uh, during the daytime, my career has been focused on selling programs into employee health and well-being uh, for the last year or so. That's been a fertility program through Store Club Fertility. Um, I've been dabbling in various entrepreneurial things for for a few years now, uh, whether that's consulting or a few other endeavors that have started and stopped from time to time. In the last year, I've been building out the Successful Working Parents podcast, uh, where we talk to successful working parents, like like we had yourself on there as well, Hannah, very, uh, just dropped yesterday, actually. Yeah. Um, and so that's been a lot of fun. And yeah, been uh, been great to learn from other working parents, how they kind of manage everything. And, and I'm still figuring all that out myself. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. I mean, I've listened to the show, obviously, I've just recently been a guest on your show. Um, and, and was it like... I, I, we're going to get to you in just a second, Lucy, but like what inspired you to kind of explore the podcasting? Was it just, I have a kid now and this has changed everything or. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I had been wanting to get into podcasting and, and you know, think of it as a way to create more content and, and build out more branding. And I thought that it was a, just good timing that I had a kid on the way. So I actually had started it before I, uh, my daughter was even born. Uh, and yeah, just a great way to kind of network with, with working parents and learn from them. Yeah. Well, Lucy, of course, um, you guys have very similar podcasts um, because Lucy's podcast is Balancing Business and Babies. You guys should probably do like a little swap at some point. Definitely. (laughs) Um, Because you probably have a lot of the same listeners. Lucy, um, your first time guest on Showing Up Solo, would you like to let everyone know a little bit more about yourself? 
Yes, so uh, I'm kind of in the middle of Verity and Anthony, I think, with my little boy. He is four. <laughs> so, well, he's four in, in April. Um, he is a lockdown baby. I had him in the first week of lockdown. Um, I was oh. very, very heavily pregnant when we went into lockdown. Um, and that was the main reason why I started my business uh, was because I was previously a dental nurse for eight years um, and with COVID and a new baby at home it didn't sit comfortably with me going back into healthcare. Um, I was expecting the pandemic to have disappeared by the time I came out of maternity leave and I was wrong. <laughs> um, so I decided to go back to some of my admin routes um, that I'd got sort of 10 15 years experience in and set up my virtual assistant business and I decided to kind of specialize and niche into podcast management which is where I am now so yeah that's kind of a little bit about me and my journey. Wow your story's quite, kind of similar to mine in terms of how I started my business because um, I actually I had I finished my second lap mat leave in 2019 and, and I started a new job but then I got laid off um, in 2020. Um, and then I, I just kind of dove in and I became a virtual assistant too. And then I, I pivoted into online marketing, coaching and consulting. Um, but it's interesting. And, and, um, Anthony and Verity, did, did the, how did the pandemic affect you with your work and your parenting? Like, like for Lucy and I, obviously it was kind of the, the spark <laughs> for, for becoming a, an entrepreneur. So I found out that I can never homeschool ever, I think was probably the biggest takeaway that we had from lockdown is just Verity. Verity is good, like, you know, doing further education. Me and my daughter nearly fell out by the end of the first week. It was, um, yeah, it, it, so that was the impact there. I hadn't actually started the business at that time. I was still working full time and the full time turned into a lot more full time. It was crazy because I was working in healthcare education at the time. And um, there were just so many people coming into the sector, obviously, with staff shortages, people moving out of hospitality and what have you, which was an amazing kind of project to be part of. But because there were so many people coming in and having to train all these people, it was, um, yeah, it was it was crazy. But that, and that kind of started the whole course creation consultancy because we had to put I think by the end of it, I'd created something like 30, 40 online courses and it was, yeah, insane. So that kind of then spurred the whole online course consultancy um, thing. So thing, thing, thing. thing. <laughs> this business that I happened to build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I keep calling it like a hobby that got out of control. That's kind of like what I think of the podcasting as well. So yeah. I love that. Um, and Anthony, I mean, obviously you're only recently a parent, but how did like the pandemic affect, did it affect your plans on becoming a parent or did it affect your career tra trajectory? Well, so we were in New York City, which really had its, you know, had to stay in the sun for sure early on. And, and it was a great test of our relationship because my wife and I had only been engaged for a couple of months at that time. And so we were suddenly locked into a little one bedroom in the middle of Manhattan and she's a principal. So she was running a school remotely for the first time. And I was actually at Headspace at the time, the meditation app. So I was, I was quite busy okay. uh, there. So I was fortunate to be, to be busy, but we were just on top of each other and both on calls all day. And we really, we, we survived. We got along pretty well. So it was a good uh, testament to our relationship. And um, yeah, certainly weren't thinking about ha trying to have kids because we just didn't know what was going on with everything. And our, our wedding itself was getting delayed. So it, I think it might've pushed things down a little bit, but um, you know, glad that we made it through. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was um, just New York. I'm like, that must have been super intense. It was <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It was yeah. like a ghost town. It was really weird. Yeah. I feel very lucky in British Columbia where I am. Cause we were kind of really, we had, um, uh, like a pretty amazing response and it was like dealt with pretty quickly. Um, but I remember it was like super isolating. Um, it, a month before lockdown happened, we moved out from a shared house that I had been in with my parents. So for the first couple of years of my kids' lives, I'd had like on-call grandparent support. And then we had just moved out when, when like a month before lockdown. And then suddenly it was like, oh my gosh, everyone is gone. And now I can't just like go to the shop if I want to. 
because I have to think about whether I'm bringing the whole kid, all the kids with me or not. And, um, but anyway, yes. Um, so let's talk about how being a parent has influenced the way we've approached our businesses. Does anyone have any like, ha uh, stories about how it's influenced their business in particular with the way they've approached their work-life balance? Um, I'll step in with that one, if that's okay. Um, so when I first started as a as a VA, as a general sort of virtual assistant, um, I I was sort of special. Not I hadn't specialised into anything then. I was I was basically taking the work as it came. So any client that wanted to work with me, I was happy because it was money, and you know I've got bills to pay at the end of the day. Um, and when I I was starting to get a little bit burnt out with it, and I was starting to get clients that were not really people that I really connected with or really sort of felt. I was still very much in the employee kind of mindset rather than actually I'm I'm my own boss now this is my business I can pick who I want to work with I don't have to just keep taking anyone um and I remember I had one specific client um that was rapidly under massively underpaying me for what I was doing for them um and I decided after speaking to a number of people that were more sort of established than I was that, you know, I needed to get rid of them basically because it was making me really stressed and worried and just, I, I just was not enjoying my job and I just wanted to, you know, go and do something else. And I thought, well, if I get rid of them, they're, they're kind of like my main client. I need something to, you know, fall back on. And I hadn't got anything to fall back on. And I, I just thought I can't do this anymore. So eventually I just sent them a, a very nice email I said um, you know I think our working relationship was coming to an end but it was after that that I decided I need to step up a little bit more and be a bit more choosy about who I work with and that was why I niched and specialized in working specifically with people that are parents um, because I I know what it's like to be on a on a Zoom call or doing a podcast and and like Anthony, you know, you had childcare issues just before you came in or my little boy constantly runs on video calls when I'm on a call and I don't want to be sitting there with, you know, a high powered CEO of a massive company and my little boy runs in on a video call because it just looks unprofessional. But if I'm sat there in front of another mum who's had that happen to them as well, they're a little bit more understanding. So that's why I only now work with parents and parents in business. So that's where I went with my business, just because I think parents kind of get it and they understand that, you know, you might be a little bit late or you might have to jump off early. <laughs> I love that that has become like a, a factor for you and who you work with, because it's the same for me. I, um, I know that any of my clients, if I had to cancel a meeting last minute because of something to do with my kids, they would, there would be no pushback. They'd be like, totally understand. Actually, Anthony, even when we were trying to um, organize a recording time for episode, both of us had various kid things come up and, yeah. um, like, it's nice when on the other end, you know, the person understands <laughs> that these things are just beyond your control. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Took us a few tries. Yeah. Did um did you find um that your like the demands of, of being a parent now have affected um like have affected your work relationships or the way you've had to approach work? Well, yeah, it's been really interesting. I'd be curious to hear everybody else's experience as well, because I don't know if this is maybe like um an American thing or maybe like a male thing, but I've felt really a lot of pressure to provide more as since I became a father and uh pressure to be like more successful than I maybe already already was um and so that's been kind of a, a driving factor so as far as doing things entrepreneurial that bring more more money into the into the you know more food into the table and are able to, to support more but also when I look at my career I'm also thinking of it as what how can I reposition it so that it's something that uh, enables more work-life balance or more flexibility. So my job now, I don't have any uh, direct reports. I'm an individual contributor. So I do have a little bit more flexibility to make my schedule. And that has a, made me feel a little bit better about being busy because I can still pitch in when I need to for my daughter. Uh, so it's sort of like that, trying to strike that balance of feeling the need to provide, but also feeling the need to to be there. That's an interesting push and pull. 
Attention all solopreneurs! Whether you're just setting sail on your business voyage or navigating uncharted waters as a seasoned explorer, we've got something extraordinary for you. Introducing the Marketing Compass Quiz. Chart your path to success. It's not just a quiz, it's your gateway to discovering your unique business adventure. Each question is carefully crafted to unveil the next destination on your marketing journey and guide you along an adventure that aligns perfectly with your goals. But wait, there's more. After taking the quiz, you'll receive an exclusive resource that aligns perfectly with your chosen adventure. Ready to embark on this exciting quest for self-discovery? Don't wait any longer. Take the Marketing Compass quiz now by heading to showingupsolo.com forward slash quiz. Your journey awaits, and we're here to guide you every step of the way. Get ready to set sail into your unique business adventure. Verity, do you have any thoughts you want to share on that? Because you've obviously been oh, doing this longer than we have. <laughs> oh, gosh. I tell you, I, I was thinking, actually, as you were both talking, it's funny because I find that the children have really influenced how the Lazy Girls Guide to Podcasting works because one of the things that I really, really push with anyone starting a podcast is it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that sometimes we can get so caught up with, well, generally with businesses and what, you know, thinking, kind of speaking to Lucy's point there that things have to look a certain way and things have to be kind of perfect. But for my first podcast, the one which you came on, Hannah, um, for the first podcast, I mean, the early episodes, I was recording those with the baby in the bouncer next to me. And to begin with, I really stressed out about the editing of that until I realized that nobody actually cared because it's not like I was doing, I don't know, like a true crime podcast where it has to be really silent because, you know, you're really building the ante and the climax of the storytelling and what have you. It was a general conversational podcast. So, I think the children have really influenced and just making me realize that things don't have to be perfect to still be successful. And I'm using inverted commas because, you know, success looks differently to to different people. But I think it's then influenced what I've done and the projects that I've done later down the road of this idea that something doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that that's a really nice message well I think it is anyway that I then go into working with people and saying to people like oh you can probably hear me doing this in the background but do you know what that's if that makes you want to subscribe from the show then maybe you know you weren't the person for this show anyway might sound a little bit brutal but do you you know what I mean do you watch Bluey do you watch Bluey Oh my yeah, gosh. Okay. So you know, a couple you know of weeks ago, right? Well, I was gonna say a couple of weeks ago, we got 12 new Bluey episodes in the UK on Disney Plus, And I cannot tell you the level of excitement in this household. Honestly, <laughs> the four of us, we all sat down with pizza to watch these 12 new episodes of Bluey. We have had Bluey on repeat since we got those new episodes. Like they've watched Same. all the seasons beginning to end, like all 150 episodes since then. Mm-hmm. But I was just thinking, you know, Unicorse, you know, the puppet the unicorn puppet yes. and his catchphrase mm, why should I care yes <laughs> I'm always telling like I'll use it to clients as well I'll be like next time you're like worried about what someone's gonna think if you're not showing up perfectly just just remember unicorns and go mm, why should I care <laughs> yes That's it's like- so true because it's when you start breaking it down you're like well is anybody caring about these different bits and pieces and you kind of start to realize to yourself that actually a lot of it is the pressure that you're putting on yourself and yeah. Lucy I completely agree that I used to be like that as well I'd be like oh my gosh you know the kids just like run into the zoom call or whatever <laughs> and actually I mean I got to the point where especially with my second child honestly she's come to so many business meetings like in person ones I can't tell you because I realized that actually it was me that was caring more than them yeah but I think sometimes you almost need to live that experience don't you for then you to realize oh actually the world is fine with this Anthony have you got to the bluey stage yet you need to discover bluey I'm well aware of bluey I haven't my daughter's not watching it but I'm well aware all my friends have kids and so I've been at their house and I've watched some bluey and it's it's a it's a treat I agree it's amazing (laughs) Lucy do you have bluey in your household I do yeah he's not my uh my little boy isn't like a massive fan of bluey but I've I, I keep trying to 
wiggle it in there. <laughs> I love it, So, because I like so good. it. So good. <laughs> we need more episodes. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I was actually thinking we need to do, I'm sure somebody has done this, but I was like, there has to be like a Bluey evaluation podcast somewhere, surely, where like, you know, people react to the episodes. Okay. That's a good idea. Idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like we won't yeah, infringe copyright, awesome. but we you think yeah. that could be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I need to find that podcast. Yeah. Um I was or just create it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm just thinking we're a whole bunch of podcasters. We should totally create this. Yeah. Um, I was happening. just thinking about the stories that you all shared, and it like it so many of it cross uh, like is similar to how my journey started when I um when I first started, my husband had been about to attend school, and of course that got postponed. So he was home. So I left him in charge of the kids and I put in like 60 hour work weeks because I was in that, like Lucy, I was in that, okay, I need to make some money here, take everything I can phase. And I definitely learned from that, that just because someone asks if they can work with you, you don't need to work with them. Um, Like stick with your gut feeling um, on who you like working with and only work with those people. When you make exceptions, that's when you have those bad relationships, I find. Um, and then, then my husband went to school and started working full time after that. And I suddenly had to fit what had been a 60 hour work week into 15 hours a week. That was all I had without kids, without kids at home, 15 hours. And I ended up dismantling a lot of my business. I, I basically had to restart and figure out a new way of doing it that would allow me to work less, but still earn more and it's that's kind of how I've pivoted into coaching because now I can um like I can offer a higher ticket service that takes less of my time investment um and yeah so it, it basically it, it completely uh childcare completely um reinvented my business for me uh d- d- does anyone have any other like ways that the that um like has 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 it have you had any similar situations like that where you've had to just kind of like completely rethink your approach I was going to say to um just to anyone that's like listening that might be having a bit of a bad relationship with a client or you know thinking that they're they're worried about it I literally after I'd sent that email to my client and and basically fired my client and said that I didn't want to work with them I I I went and threw up in the toilet because <laughs> I, I thought I'm I've literally left myself about any income now what on earth have you just done you know you stupid stupid woman you've got a little boy at home you know and uh, your husband already works 60 hours a week you know what are you doing um and I think it I actually got a new client the same day wow and it was purely based on the fact that that I hadn't had any communication with this client, but what I, what it had done, sending that email gave me a fire. It put a like a, a fear in me, basically. And I know that sounds like a thing, you know, they say feel the fear and do it anyway. That fear of not having a client and not having any income coming in gave me the drive and the push that I needed to go out and find a new one. Whereas I think sometimes one of the problems is that you can become a bit kind of complacent sometimes and you think oh you've got this kind of in you know you've got this income coming in you've got three or four clients or however many clients you're comfortable with and you don't really actively kind of look for them anymore yeah not having one put it into me that actually I need to keep getting these people in I need to keep advertising myself I need to keep marketing myself and I've not stopped since so even when I've got full books, I'm still marketing myself. I'm still active. I'm still doing it so that I never have to worry about that again, so that I've got a full list in the back of people that I can call and say, I've got space in my diary now. Do you want to, you know, do you want to give me a call and we can get together and work together now? And yeah. say, so, yeah, that's a little, little snippet of advice. I think yeah. that's really I mean, the same. Important. Yeah, go on. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing for for podcasts, guess right? Like we all we all have podcasts, and I think that at first you're always like, "Oh, I, I'll take anybody." Like I just got to get the content out, and then eventually you do get to a point where you realize some guests better align with what you're trying to accomplish, and it's you're better off like f- actually focusing and 
putting out good episodes with the right guests instead of just cranking out a bunch with with anybody that will you know all your friends or whoever you can get get onto a podcast and just random people that you meet on the internet so i think that i think that that focus really helps and regardless of the amount of time that you have like kind of to your point when you're when you go from like having a full day to to 15 hours a day i do believe also in I've heard like it's called Parkinson's law where like the amount of time that you have is like the, the work will fill the amount of time you have for it. So I think that you it's help, really helpful to have a fixed amount of time, get clear on what you do want to focus on and, and not work with who you don't want to. And, and then just really drill down in, in those few hours that you do have. Yeah. It's definitely influenced the way I approach marketing and actually how I train people to market their businesses now is because I had such a limited amount of time. I, I, came up with strategies that allowed me to do um, like repurposing content like crazy. I, I like I have a favorite t-shirt that says just go batch it crazy because I'm all <laughs> about batching content ahead of time and then like cutting it up into smaller pieces. So Verity, you looked like you had an insight to share. I was just thinking when Lucy was saying about continually marketing, I think that's just such an important thing to do. I think that a lot of people, as you were saying, kind of get a little bit complacent but then there's people like me who lurk and who don't because like for example where, before we started recording we came on I was like oh my gosh it's Lucy from LinkedIn I don't <laughs> think I and I know this sounds so, so 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 silly but I don't think I've ever liked or commented on any of your posts because I'm one of those people who just kind of lurks and I read everything and I'm like oh I don't want to like you know interact <laughs> why would I do that um you know and I, I do that for everybody um and I just lurk but but I know what you do. So if I'm ever in the position where I'm thinking, oh, I want some help, then there are different people who are top of mind in different areas because they are continually marketing themselves. So yeah. I think that's re a really, really important point. And then to go to Anthony's point as well, what you're saying about podcast guests, you were just making me chuckle there. Um, I don't, I go out and like, I ask people to come on my podcast now. I haven't, I don't, um, I was going to say, I don't like, you know, kind of freely advertise people come to come to me and like, I mean, some people apply, which is great. And then like I go through them, but the large part of it for about 12, 18 months now, I've only had guests on who I've actually gone out and actively recruited myself we're talking about kids i've just found a child outside the um outside the door there i, just, I don't know I'm if you can hear them found a child, child. Found a child. <laughs> just any <Bye>. child <laughs> um but it, it goes back to what anthony was saying about how you know you do get into a position where for podcasting you do have the luxury of not being able to just kind of grab Bob off the street. Although that would probably also make an interesting podcast to just grab some random. I'm just on the fire the tonight. I'm just come yeah. out. Of it. I need to copyright these ideas as I say them. Yeah, this is all free. This is all free. Uh, free options here. Free content. The Bob off the street Absolutely. podcast. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. Oh I would gosh. listen to a Bob off the street podcast. <laughs> I think that could also be the title. or something yeah. in that. I'm going to start writing these ideas very, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever recorded a podcast with somebody and then just felt like it wasn't it wasn't what it and then, did, and not and then not released it? Oh, I've recorded one or two and I like if you're listening, maybe <laughs> um I recorded <laughs> one or two where I was just like, oh, this was not a good episode, but I've ended up releasing it anyway because like I don't like the wasted effort, but I don't think that's yeah. really a best practice to follow. So yeah, I'm curious definitely like, happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple in the vault yeah. that I never made it, never saw the light of day. The um, the old tech issue, yeah. um, discussion oh, came record. out. Yeah. Oh dear, what is the oh the whole thing corrupted? Oh my god! Now there's gonna <laughs> honestly, there's gonna be somebody who now randomly comes across this podcast episode, listens to it, and is like, oh, verity. But um, <laughs> you told yeah, me tech issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You said that it was a tech issue. <laughs> Um, yeah, although I will caveat that by saying I had this conversation with a fellow podcaster, um, Krista Campbell, who's got, I'm going to shout her out because her podcast is amazing. It's called She Calls Her Shots. Um, but she actually gave some really good advice once she had a uh, interview or something. And she said it just didn't go um, very well. But then she used the information to actually create a series of blog posts. So then the individual still got credited with the information um, and like their input. And then she did like all the backlinks and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's actually quite a nice way to still have that person included. 
but yeah. um i can't remember wh- what the reason was or anything um but i did quite like that how she said you know she still utilized the content just not maybe in the way that it was first intentioned unlike me who's just like oh tech issues <laughs> Of yeah, course, but... now you are going to have an issue where if you ever do have a tech issue, Verity, someone's going to be sitting there thinking, no like, gonna... oh my God, I was that boring now. No, one, no one's ever going to believe me, are they? <laughs> well, now I'm really glad no. that at least my guess have a tech issue. Saw the light of day. <laughs> well, what I was going to say as well is it's ridiculous because I use software and everyone knows what software I use because I talk about it on the podcast and everyone knows that, like how it uploads immediately and all this. Oh gosh, I'm just going to quit talking because I'm just getting myself into a hole now. I need a new excuse. This is going into the show, yeah. so. I need a new excuse. I do. I really do. Yeah. Um, I think I do think we could probably go on forever. I mean, Verity seems to be an endless well Sorry. Of, of new podcast ideas, um, for one. Um, but um, like just in the interest of everyone's time, especially if they're parents, they probably don't have a lot of time to listen. So why don't we just do a quick little round robin and everyone can share Maybe they're like key piece of advice or tips or or just even like sympathetic shoulder uh, message for anyone who is a parent balancing being a parent with entrepreneurship. And I'm going to pick on you first, Lucy, because you haven't spoken in a while. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, a little tidbit of information. I would say to anyone that is thinking that they want to become a freelancer or or have their own business um and these the purely for people that are thinking about it and not sure is just to do it like I say you need to have that fear and just do it um it's I I have days we all have days we'll all agree that you know it is terrifying sometimes and you do worry about things um but it's as far as freedom goes and flexibility goes there's nothing like being your own boss as far as I'm concerned you know I I'm available for my little boy whenever he needs me you know if he if the school calls I don't need to worry about letting my work down I don't need to worry about anything I can work from home do what I need to do bring in an income um set my own hours and I'm there for my son when he needs me so yeah for if you if you're going to be thinking about doing it or very new to it yeah stick with it and keep doing it wonderful anthony what about you what's your takeaway (laughs) um two things the first one is like don't just consume like actually do stuff similar to to what lucy's saying i think i spent a lot of time wanting to be an entrepreneur and just waiting for the perfect inspiration to hit me after like the next book or the next online course or the next podcast and while i think all those things are great i think that nothing nothing beats just like actually making something and putting one foot in front of the other. And then I think the biggest thing for me was like the, just the fear of putting stuff out there. I think that was probably why I was hesitant to do that. And I think like the biggest takeaway there is like similar to just do it. Like nobody cares. I think, I think we get so worked up about like how much, how embarrassed we're going to be. And and I think no one really cares what you're doing. Everyone's got, everyone's got their own stuff going on. So just that could be depressing if you let it be, but it's also very freeing um, to just do what you want to do because no one cares. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, actually that just reminds me of something that someone told me about the, um, you know, when someone like cuts you off when they're driving really badly and you get really annoyed at that person, someone told me like, just pretend, just assume that they have a pregnant woman in, in labor in the backseat of their car and, yeah. and kind of have that attitude. Like if you just assume that, that people have like a good reason for being like a jerk on the road or like, or, like then it makes it easier. Like if you're worried about rejection and everything, you just assume that there's everyone else has got something going on so they're going to be understanding of you too right if you can just like kind of adopt that attitude it's all in your head any any way you can get your mind to think about it differently is is super helpful yeah verity what about you i would say just be respectful of your time and be kind to yourself because you know you can't do everything and that's absolutely fine and nobody can do everything and you know don't start comparing your one or two man man team woman team whatever with you know what massive corporations are putting out or celebrities because you can't see the teams that are necessarily sat behind them so i would say just be realistic with your time and just be kind to yourself because you're probably doing i always think of it that you what's the saying you're living the life that somebody else can only dream of so yeah yeah i love that i love that 
And I, like, I think my takeaway that I want to give out there is, is, is on a similar vein is to just be, be realistic about how much time you have and don't be afraid to be late to things. Actually, that was one of the pieces of advice my doctor gave me after my first baby. She was like, Hannah, you're going to have to practice being late because you're never going to be on time again. Um, which for me, I'm like, it's always about being, I was always like early or like on time is late for me before. Um, but, but it's like with a lot of the work that I do, a lot of the clients that I work with, we're not talking kidneys and coolers here. If I have to postpone a meeting or something has to come in a little bit later because the kids didn't let me sleep all night, you know, maybe someone had a nightmare or like decided to come in at 3 a.m. and use up all the pillow space. <laughs> um, like it's, it's, and I, I just need to take a day to like actually sleep and, and recover. It's okay. Most people will understand if you just give them the honest reason. And, and that, in my experience, that has been the case. Like my clients, I've never had anyone go, oh my God, seriously, you said it would be here today and now you're canceling because you didn't sleep well last night. Zero clients have responded to me that way. Um, but then again, I am also picky with who I work with. Like Lucy, I, I like to make sure that I'm working with people who, who do understand that. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining. I think this has been a really interesting conversation. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, the group that we have here today. I've, I've, there's some really good chemistry <laughs> yeah. going on here. Yeah. What a crew. <laughs> can't wait for the, can't wait for the Blueies rewatchable podcast. Yes, I know. I know. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. We'll have to do that. We'll have to do that as like a, yeah. Um, <laughs> and don't, and don't forget Bob on the street as well. That's yeah. A, that's I'll, I'll tell you what, my, my husband, I'm, I'm here for Bob on the street. <laughs> uh, my husband and I, for years talked about doing like super Y. Have you, if you watch super Y, Oh, it's terrible. It's not bluey level entertainment. <laughs> and we used to like come up with like theories, like he's actually a super villain and he's like manipulating all his friends. Anyway, we so we'd come up with these like weird theories for kids' shows that were just too boring to watch. I'm just <laughs> all that obviously because blue is amazing. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so as we wrap up, I would love to go around one more time. And if you could just tell everyone where they can find you, if there's anything you want to share with them and um, yeah, like where they can find you in this online space and let's go reverse this time. So Verity, you first. <laughs> so um, Lazy Girls Guide to Podcasting, it is on pretty much every podcast platform and YouTube that you can find. So Lazy Girls Guide to Podcasting and then I'm at Verity Song on, on Twitter. Yes, I love Twitter. Don't judge me. At Verity it's Song on, on Twitter fan, and right? on X. I know. But you say X and everyone's like, what's that? But at Verity Song on, on Twitter, X, whatever they want to call themselves today and Instagram as well. Those are the two I probably hang out the most on. Perfect. Anthony, what about you? Yeah, check out the Successful Working Parents podcast. Um, I have a special guest Hannah last uh, yes just yesterday, and uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Anthony Franzese, F R A N Z E S E. Perfect. And then Lucy, we yeah, already know uh, you're so on LinkedIn. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> Lucy from LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a balancing business and babies podcast, which like Verity uh, is on pretty much all of the major streaming platforms and YouTube. Uh, so go check that out. Um, and you can find me on pretty much every single social media platform there is. Um, I'm on Threads, X, Twitter, <laughs> LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> uh, and it's at Howl Virtual. So on everything. <laughs> nice and simple. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining me. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Let me know if in the comments, if you want another conversation like this, if you want me to get this group of people back together again, or if you want to hear this bluey podcast or Bob on the street. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and until next week, thank you again for tuning in. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Showing Up Solo. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving us a review or sharing your thoughts in the comments. These simple gestures help us appease the algorithm gods and continue to bring you great, free education. Ready to navigate the world of marketing with confidence? Take the Marketing Compass Quiz, available at showingupsolo.com, to discover the next phase of your journey. And don't forget to explore our range of courses and coaching programs while you're there. Let's transform your solo venture into a thriving success story together. Until the next episode, keep showing up and making your mark in the world of solopreneurship. See you soon.